channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Last week, because blog talk radio, I don't know, something happened with them. But thank God we're back and that Raylene has graciously agreed to do her repeat performance, only a real one here. So that's awesome. She is also going to channel Eric for y'all's questions. But, uh, you know, it, uh, Raylene, her big specialty, or one of the many, is crystal. Oh, God. There's the, uh, don't mind that, people. It's life, okay? It's the doorbell. Uh, uh, but anyway, so um, uh, she, her one of her things is crystals. She's such an expert in crystals. So uh, we're going to talk about them, and it's going to be like a lightning round. Is that okay with you, Raylene? And hi, Eric. I love you. Absolutely. Hi, Lisa. Eric says hello to you. He says he loves you, Mama. And he says hello to everybody else. What is it? Eric says hello to everybody else, and he was saying hello to you. Oh, okay. And so we're gonna, he loves you, Mom. I love you more. So we're going to go through just real briefly and just like a lightning round, right? We're going to go through yes. as many crystals I have on this list as possible as to their main benefits. So, Absolutely. Amethyst. Amethyst is an amazing crystal for psychic protection. It's also amazing for overactive minds. If somebody is dealing with feeling fearful, whether it's fearful of spirit roles or fearful of just anything in life, amethyst is very calming and very nurturing. It's also very protective. All right, so you guys, uh, you might want a pen and paper. Uh, go get a pen and paper so you can write these things down. And that's an yeah. order from Mama Elisa. <laughs> All right, what about agate? Which agate was it? I don't know. Warrior stone. So there's, agate? Is, there's I don't several know. agates. There's pink agate. There's purple agate. There's white agate. Um, oh, it geez, depends on the you. God, pick one. Just pick one. Okay, we're going to go with white agate. And what this says as it connects you to celestial energy, higher consciousness. It connects you to your spirit guides. It's all about the crown chakra. It enlightens the crown chakra. It opens the crown chakra and balances it. It's also very good for nurturing. It's very good for babies and infants. If you have an infant that is dealing with colic and is having a hard time with settling down, any form of agate is actually really good for them, but white agate is really good because it connects them to their... Um, it connects them to the heaven realms, and it makes them feel at ease. Well, look, I, I say you put it in their diaper so that when your spouse changes that diaper, he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> I can't you know, why? Maybe not. All right, so what about uh, citrine? Citrine is, uh, Eric is touching base on your joke about the, the diaper. He goes, Mom, I agree with you. He goes, that would be a classic move. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something you would do. <laughs> well, um, one of my kids uh, told me that Annika needed her diapers changed. And I went there, you know, say a million diapers. And it was funny. They were milk duds. They put milk duds in her diaper. Anyway, that's a lot. That's a lot of the day. So citrine. That's funny. I love it. Citrine is a very good crystal for your solar plexus chakra. Not oh. only that, it's really good for manifesting finances. It's great for abundance of all types. If you're looking for like a new home or something that is new energy, it's really good to bring in new energy. Um, oh, and again, it corresponds to the solar plexus and it also corresponds to the sacral chakra, both of them. Oh, wow, that's good. Super. You know, I think I have it's citrine. It's a happy crystal. Now I remember why. Yeah. Did you say that? It's a yeah. happy crystal? Oh. It's known as a happy crystal. And actually, I have a piece in my wallet too, in my coin part. You keep oh, it in there because yeah. it brings oh, it brings too. good good finances to you. Yeah. Cool. I'm waiting. All right, Amazon. I mean, uh, adventuring. So there's different types of adventuring. We're gonna go with green adventuring. Green adventuring okay. is a very feminine energy. It helps to balance your feminine energy. We carry masculine and feminine energy. Everybody does. We have a little bit of both. And what that crystal does is it balances the feminine energy. 
Um, it also is really good for relieving anxiety. So if you're someone that suffers from, like, panic disorder, it's really good to keep it with you, to wear it as a necklace um, because it's very nurturing for you. The other thing it helps with is uh, brain memory, um, kind of like fogginess. If your loved one is also having like Alzheimer's or dementia, it's really good to put underneath their mattresses um, while they're sleeping because it it helps to to activate different different energy in the brain, so that way they can then begin to remember things that they were forgetting or things that wow. are even blocked out at that. If you're it's also good for people that block out trauma. Now, you want to be ready for this crystal because if you're someone that has blocked out trauma, like, you know, a family member sexually assaulting you or abusing you, then this will bring it back to the surface for you. If you hold it in your hand and you ask your guides or God or source to bring forth something that you need emotional healing on, it's going to bring that forward. So, you know, within that same week, you may notice that you're remembering certain aspects and the crystal is bringing it forward to bring healed to bring healing to you. Oh, so awesome. it's one of my favorite crystals. It's one of my favorite crystals. It comes in also red and pink. Pink is hard wow. to find though. Oh yeah. All right, what about black tourmaline and pink tourmaline? Black tourmaline is an amazing crystal for protection. Now, if you're an empath and you're dealing with, you feel other people's emotions, Say when your kids come home from school, you feel all of their excitement or your husband comes home and you feel tired and your mood changes immediately from it being okay or from wherever it was at. You're an empath yeah. and black tourmaline. Yeah, and it can be challenging having that type of, you know, gift and not knowing how to put blocks between other people's energies. And so yeah. black tourmaline, wearing it as a necklace, it repels all of that energy that's around you. And it puts this protection up against all of that negative energy, even if it's not negative. If it's somebody who's happy mood, you don't necessarily want to be tapping into that. You want to keep your energy yours. Yes. Yes. And you have to ask, is this mine or is this somebody else's? That also right. is really important. Okay. Pink tourmaline. Same deal or something different? Pink, no, no. Pink tourmaline. It's also really good for protection aura fills from like negative energy. But it's good for your heart chakra. If you have a block in your heart chakra, um, reasons why you may have a block in your heart chakra, you know, a divorce, a breakup, um, a grief, a a loss of a child, um, a loss Mm -hmm. of a family member, blocks are created in your heart chakra. What pink tunneling will do is it removes that block. But there is a... Uh, what's the word for it? There's something in pink tourmaline that you have to be careful with. It cannot be put in water, and it can be toxic to the body. Um, that's oh. one of the few crystals that carries, um, I believe it might be mercury, but I might be wrong on that. There's a, there's a chemical in that crystal, so it's not easy to find that crystal. It's actually considered a rare one. I mean, oh. if you use it, you want to get a tumbled version of it versus raw. Um, oh, oh a tumbled, like the food that. Oh, okay. All right, what about tiger's eye? Tiger's wow. eye is tiger's eye is a really good grounding crystal. If you're somebody that's really forgetful, say you go to put a load of laundry in and you forgot that you had the laundry in the washer and now it's stinky the next day, you're not grounded. Yeah. If you're very spacey or forgetful, um, you're not grounded. Tiger's eye, it's very quick. It's very fast acting. So after about you hold a tiger eye in your hand and you sit there and you breathe in about for two minutes, it's going to really ground you and it's going to really focus you if you dedicate that time to it. If you're just wearing a necklace or if you have the crystal in your pocket, you're going to notice about two days later, you're feeling really grounded and connected to the earth. So it's good for helping you to remember things. Memory is what it's great at. Um, And it helps you to do business things. If you're lacking on business activities, tiger eye is the crystal that you need. Ah, uh, all right. What about sodalite? Now, that is one that can, that you can't put in water too, right? Sodalite, no. Sodalite can be in water. Selenite can be in water. I think that's what you're thinking of. Sodalite oh, is a blue crystal. Yeah. Sodalite is oh, a blue crystal. It's, ah. it's uh, good for communication. It's good for your throat chakra. It's actually a mix of blue and white. It's really beautiful too. Um, it can oh, be put yeah, in water. Yeah. And it helps people to communicate the truth. If there's something that you've been wanting to tell somebody, but you haven't been able to tell them for whatever reason, 
Well, then Soda Light will help you to gently communicate things that need to be communicated, um, whether it's harsh or whether it's easy. It will just help you to gently communicate, very soft and subtle. Um, Soda Light does not work quickly. It takes about three to four days before you're going to really notice the effects of your communicating or your wanting to communicate. Now, um, black tourmaline, black tourmaline, it works quickly. You'll notice that maybe 30 minutes after having it, you'll start to feel wow. more centered or more protected. That's awesome. The other thing I want to touch base on is cleansing and charging crystals. Yes. If I, you're I not gonna, feeling a, what do you do when you first get, bring them home? Because they've been fingered, you know, it's just handled by all sorts of people with different energy. And then how often and what do you do to make, to recharge and maintain and you know etc absolutely yes this is actually very important so whenever you buy a new crystal i always cleanse them you can cleanse them with the sun or with the moon we only have a full moon we have about actually about a week of the moon energy when we get a full moon but the day that we have the full moon is the most powerful day to do it because of that energy and so yeah. it cleanses that you leave them overnight if you're using the moon and if you're using the day you can leave it out there about Seven hours or more. The longer, the better. Also, you don't want to use water on a lot of your crystals. Some of, a lot of crystals are water resistant. Where they deteriorate with water. Like stalagmite. Yeah. That's one that you don't want to put in water. And that's also one that you don't want to put in the sun because it doesn't like the sun all that much. It prefers so the Google moon it. energy. So we got to Google it. What about burying it in dirt or salt for a while? So burying them in dirt is very cleansing for them as well, but it does it does not charge them. Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, a difference between cleansing and charging. The cleansing is clear, clearing the energy that it's got, and not only that it came with, but say you use it and you use it to unblock a chakra, you're going to want to cleanse it after you're done with that because it's now holding on to energy. If the crystal's uh, got too much energy, it's no longer going to pick up different energy for you. So depending uh, on how often you use your crystal, that's going to be how often you want to cleanse it. For me, I use crystals every single day, but I don't use the same crystal. I might find myself maybe three or four days using the same crystal, and then I switch it up to something else. Whatever you're drawn to, that's going to be the crystal that you're needing. And so I have a little spot on my windowsill. The sun comes in pretty pretty good, and also the moon happens to shine there when we get it. And so my windowsill is where I set my crystals, um, or you can put them outside directly. It's completely up to you. Mm -hmm. I always like to say, you know, whenever we have a full moon, just put your crystals out because it's like a, a biological clock that you're using. Ah. To kind of remind you, an alarm to remind you it's, it's time for cleansing. Cleansing ah. and charging will be done by the moon. Um, you can also use sage. If you want to sage, um, cleanse the energy out of them. Sage will be great. Mm -hmm. Palo Santo will be great. Even a mm -hmm. candle, fire, the flame is what's clearing the energy. Anything that has fire and incense, that will clear the energy of the crystals as well. That's so cool. Now, I, I, you can use rose quartz to charge it, right? Or is that total? Um, no, is that selenite? So, I can't remember. No, you can use selenite. Selenite doesn't charge, but it cleanses. The only thing that charges is the sun mm -hmm. or the moon. And then oh. you can use other crystals to cleanse. Selenite is one of the cleansing crystals. Clear quartz is also another cleansing crystal. And okay. what you do is you'll just set your crystals either on top of it or in a in a case with a with a fairly large size of that crystal. That's so cool. All right, so what about selenite? Can we talk about that? What uh, what benefits yes. does it have? Selenite is very good for connecting you to celestial energy. It's also really good if you're trying to remember, if you're trying to access your past life or your future life, it's really good to help you access the Akashic Records. It's wow. very, very high energy. It's very celestial energy. If you're trying to communicate with interdimensional beings or extraterrestrials, selenite will help you to access that frequency. Wow. It's great for the sound chakra. I know some people are very weary about that. It's Knowing who you're connecting to is the thing to take the creepiness away. If you know the being, then you know that they're coming from a place of love and light. But if you don't know them, then it can be very challenging and have that very eerie feeling. Yeah. All right. So yeah. what about Labrador, uh, Labradorite? Labradorite. 
I love Labradorite. It's one of my favorite crystals. You might hear me say that a lot because I have so many favorite crystals. Labradorite is really good. <laughs> yeah, it's really good for your heart chakra. Um, if you're dealing with an emotional block, if this is something that helps to relieve trauma, um, it's really good to bring in celestial energy as well, extraterrestrial energy. It's connected to um, your intuition. So if you're somebody that's wanting to work on intuition, Labradorite is really good for intuition and helping you to just have a knowing of what to do or a knowing of information. Well, that's cool. All right, what about blue hyenite? Blue that's kyanite. one you mentioned before. It is. It's actually another one of my favorites. I actually use blue kyanite on a weekly basis. Um, a lot of times, if you're having struggle struggling with communicating, just, you know, you're, you're kind of like mumbling over your own words. You're not being able to get your point across. Say you're, you have a, a great idea of something to explain, but in your mind, it, it says well, but when you say it, it comes out completely off and you offend somebody. Blue kyanite can help you to balance all of that so you're saying things accurately and so people can understand what you're trying to get across. Um, good. So it's really good Board for meeting. unblocking your throat. Yeah, yes. awesome. It's great That's for right. studying. It's also great for mm-hmm. studying. Blue kyanite, if you're in college mm-hmm. or if you're in school, and you're needing help with studying, blue kyanite is going to be the thing that helps you to study. It's also good for writers. If you are someone that writes books or if you're a, even a movie writer, anything that has to do with writing, writing your story, whatever it may be, blue kyanite really helps you to write in an authentic way. And it's going to help you to write in a way that you won't see others writing. It will not look like typical writing. It's going to be something amazing and more powerful. So maybe – it helps you channel your higher self or other beings that can help you write. Is that part of it? Yes. Yes, it does. We all have writing guides. Um, if writing is our thing, then we do have a writing guide. And so it helps you to connect to that energy. Um, but even if you're unaware of your guides, the crystals are still going to work for you. They connect to those types of energies. Okay. All right. Just a couple more. Uh, rose quartz, because we've been talking about it, but. I kind of rose, rose quartz is the love stone. If you are having mm-hmm. trouble in the romance area, what I recommend doing is placing a rose quartz in the right corner of your room. The right corner is your romance corner. I don't know if you're into oh, it's, 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 are you talking about facing your bed? It's on the right upper no. corner. No, nope, not placing your bed on the right corner, but you're going to get a rose quartz, and you're just going to put a rose quartz in the right corner of your room. You can tape it on the wall, or you can put it on a little shelf, and it's yeah, but, to bring but love what, to you. Are you talking about as you walk into the room through the door, the right? Yep, and if it's the, room, huh? the right far corner to the back, the uh, back right from corner. From the door. I got you, got you, yep. got you. Okay. You're going to use the tape of rose quartz there. But can you also use that to help other forms of love, like friendship, uh, your parents, your siblings, anything like that? Yes, because it connects to all of that. I'm so glad that you touched base on that because when you think of love, you think of like romance, right? It's not always romance. We have love with our siblings, with our kids, with our family members, with our blog members. You know, we have love. So it brings in unconditional love. It's not only romance love. It brings in unconditional love. But if you're having trouble you know, with your marriage or in a relationship, it'll help you to fix it. Now, whether it's fixing it and you you leave out of the marriage, well, that's what fixed it. Or maybe it's fixing it and repairing the marriage. It's up to the crystal and up to your path to decide what it's going to do for you. All right. Okay, so, hey, Raylene, you picked the last crystal. And we're going to have to have a part two because I got a long, a cool, long list here. All righty. Absolutely. Blue calcite. We haven't touched base on any calcite. Calcite is a very soft crystal and very subtle crystal. It comes in green and blue, orange and pink. Pink is very hard to find, though. Um, With this crystal, it helps you to unblock blockages in any area of your life. Not your chakras, but if you're being blocked from starting a new job or going on vacation, traveling on airplanes, so you have fear of something and you're allowing something to block you what calcite does is it helps you to remove all of that fear and anxiety if you suffer from anxiety 
It also helps to clear that anxiety that you're dealing with. Now, blue calcite is specifically corresponding to your throat chakra and communication, but we also have green calcite, and that would be your heart chakra um, and the way that you're expressing things from your heart because sometimes people can express things in an angrily way, and it's because not that they're having trouble with their throat chakra, but that they're having trouble in their heart. So I really Uh, like using calcite for communication. Any color is great for communication. Okay. Okay. All right, so listen, uh, I think it'd be cool if you guys on the line, if you, uh, if you want, you should ask what crystals, uh, it, it can help you figure out what crystals would be good for you. Now, for me, what? What do you think, Eric and Raylene? What's going what's gonna to be the crystals I need to, uh, to have Eric. around me? Eric says clear quartz, Mom. That's clear it? quartz. Yes, because... Okay. You don't want to use a whole lot of crystals at one time. You want to see how the crystal is responding to you. Clear quartz can be programmed to any chakra and can be programmed to anything that you want it to be. So say you want it to be programmed to helping you with feeling better if you're sick. It can take illnesses away. Or if your anxiety is really high, you can program it to do anything specifically that you want it to do. So that's why he says clear quartz because it's a crystal of all traits. Cool. So, I mean, when I uh, measure my chakras, I'll tell you guys how to do that. It, it, you know, it, and I've been told uh, by whoever that my heart chakra is the one that has the most trouble. So I was thinking maybe a pink tourmaline necklace. I don't know, but that's hard to find, so we'll see. Um, but you guys. It is hard to find. Yeah, if you get a pendulum and uh, you get whoever you're testing their chakras, then to lay down on the sofa and you hold it, you know, a certain amount, you know, it, it, you feel it. Uh, above each chakra, you wait, and it will start to spin, hopefully in the right direction, but if it does not, there's something going on, and it should have the circumference uh, of a, about a golf ball, right? So you can go yes. march down through the body, check all your chakras, see which ones are lacking, and, um, and you know, then... Then you can ask Eric what the hell to do. So um, with each of those, so I think that's really yes. kind of new. Um, all right, and also you can print the out part of the, of how yes. you're supposed to be spinning and all that. Absolutely. The other thing about chakras is, if you have a crystal and it's the color of a chakra, it's going to correspond to that chakra. So if you don't know ah. much about chakras or crystals, if you just know the simple color of that chakra. And if you don't, you can go on to Google and type in chakra chart sheet, and you'll get something that comes up very easily. But if the color of the crystal is the same color as the chakra, it's going to correspond to that. And just putting the crystal on your body, wearing it as a necklace for a couple of days, um, that's going to be how you're going to get the best energy. Putting it underneath your pillow as you sleep or making grids yeah. underneath your mattresses. Okay. There's lots of ways that's to good. use them. Awesome. Hey, Eric, ready? Are you ready to take callers, peeps? Yes, ma'am. Okay, should be fun. All right, let's take somebody from the 815 area code. Hey there, how are you doing? And welcome to the show. What's your first name and where are you calling from? Veronica from Cherry Valley, Illinois. Hi, Veronica. What what Hello. would you like? Hi, Mrs. Lisa. Hi, babe. Hi, Veronica. How Hi, are Veronica. you? I'm doing Hi, wonderful. Thank you for it's asking. A, it's an honor to talk to the both of you. I really appreciate it. Oh, oh, thank talk, you. I'm, I'm, Absolutely. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know there's a lot of calls. Yeah, it's an honor to talk oh. to you. So, oh, well, what thank you. Ask, Ned. I'm sorry, you're breaking up. I'm sorry. What would you like to ask? Oh, my father passed away this past July 31st. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I was wondering. Yes, we can bring him through. He's actually already here for you. Your Good. dad is coming through, and he said that he's standing to the left side of you. He has actually been here for quite some time. He is showing me his lungs. Do you know what his lungs are an indication of? He, yeah, he died from uh, COPD. Oh, I'm so sorry. Failed. So that's, that's him just verifying that this is him for you. 
Um, mm. There's some type of documents or paperwork that needs to be filled out. Do you know what this is that he's showing? Uh, I'm looking at documents. It looks like, um, I don't know if this is something legal or uh, what the papers are. I'm looking at documents. Do you know, are you trying to file papers for something right now? No, um, no, not that I know. Well, I mean, My mom's not either. Let's I'm see sorry. The, what your father, your, what, what does your father have to say? Uh, what is your father's first name? Donald. 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 What are you, what are these papers you're showing, Raylene? So that's it. He's showing me documents, but I'm not understanding what the documents are for. Um, there's something in connection to property. He's telling me property. I don't know if this is his property. Is there anything that's connected to his property? Are you trying to do something with your property? Oh, my gosh. Yes, we're selling our home. Oh. That's it. He's letting you know that this is something that's taking place. It's going to happen for you. I'm going to tell you that it's probably going to happen a lot sooner than what you would like. He's showing this paperwork and stuff that's really going to be filed, and it's it's showing like it's happening right now. Wow. Wow. Thank you. What a validation. Um, Yeah, that's shocking because nobody knows, but – um, is he's okay then? Yes, sweetheart. He is completely fine. He's happy. He's letting me know that he's not restrained anymore. There was some type of uh, restraint that he had while he was in life. He's up and moving. He's able to breathe. He doesn't need any type of help anymore, no assistance, and that's what he's free of. He's saying that he loves you yep. very much. Um, He's apologizing for the way that he left. It's really important that you know that he was not in pain. There was some type of state where he was in where he wasn't in his body. He left prior to his body dying. Oh, oh he did. Okay, that's comforting. Oh, yeah, cool. Okay, well, yeah, Veronica, okay. Thinks, no, he knows that. And, uh, hey, um, can you uh, please keep our boy, uh, you know, in line? Our Eric? Oh, I talk to him <laughs> all the time, all the time. So oh. I've asked him to be one of my guys. So. Awesome. All right. Hey, well, Eric, uh, all right. Thank you so much, and thank you, ladies. Lots of You're love to, both, to all of you. Love, love back to you, thank you. Brian. Many blessings. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Guys. Bye. Oh, wow. That was so validating. Good Lord. Oh, my God. Oh. Did I just eliminate somebody accidentally? No. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got somebody from the 646 area code. Hi there. How are you doing? Hello. I'm Diana. Um, hi, hi, Diana. Diana. Hi, Diana. Hi. Um, so I have so many questions. I can only ask one. So one of the things that has been happening is um, I'm not sure I, I – um, uh, how do I ask this question? I feel like I'm seeing things like, um, like spirit, I guess, uh, sometimes from the, from the corner of my eye or like if I slightly, you know, move to the left or at a distance, I see something is well, not true. Yeah. No, Eric says hello to you. And he says what that? that what you're going through, Eric says hello. Oh, and no. <laughs> he's explaining that what you're going through is a shift. We all have different times where we shift. You're going through a shift to where you're going to start seeing more cool. clearly that shadow out of the side of your eye. It's going to become more vivid and more clear. He's also talking about your dreams meaning, having great meaning to them right now, too. He's asking you to keep a journal to write down things that you're seeing, numbers that are coming to you, because you're going through a big um It's a shift. You're going through a spiritual awakening and you're shifting to a higher dimension. The easiest way to understand this is we have our third dimension, our fourth dimension, and then our fifth dimension. The whole topic to go into. But you're going from the third and you're going up to the fourth. You're not going to be able to handle the foods that you once used to love. You're going to your body's going to start rejecting stuff. And you'll be like, oh my God, but I love it. But your body's like, no, you don't. So what can she um, if, do to help this this transition besides listening to the body and nutritional needs? So you have to listen to your body when you're going through these shifts, these transitions. 
because if you don't, you're going to find yourself being sick. And when I say sick, like throwing up, diarrhea, vomiting, no. headaches. So you really want to treat your body right, raise your vibration. Your vibration needs to raise because you are raising. Crystals that I would recommend for you is selenite. Selenite is a very high-frequency crystal, and it helps you to raise your vibration to where you need it to be to match that fourth dimension. It also helps to make things easier. Selenite makes change easier for you to go through. Oh, so you know, diet for me was a, a big challenge. And when I used selenite, it helped me to just push through the obstacles that I was I was using or I was facing. That's, that's, that's right. S-E-L, right? Not A. S E L. Right? Yeah. I already S-E-L. have a selenite. Yes. I, oh, I just yes. have to get it out of my box. I mean, out of my bag, um, because I was in the moving trend of moving. But one of the things that I see is that I see everything. Like, now I see, like, spirit, but I also see DFs, you know, like, I see not so good stuff. <laughs> so, um, how, do, how do you, how do you, I, I guess, what do you just do? Just acknowledge it and that's it and move away? Like, you know, no. just get the hell out of here. No. If it's, if it's negative. I'm sorry? If it's something negative, you. if it's something negative, you actually do not even have to acknowledge it because that's what it's really wanting. So if something negative, you just want to not give it any tension, and in your mind, you tell it to go away, and that's a way of yes. not acknowledging it. Now, okay. the other thing that you can use is crystals, black tourmaline, because yes, you know, some of I the, have the things when when you're going through spiritual awakening, your mind can create something that's not actually happening for you. Oh, so you really right, want yeah. to be careful because. Um, If you, you know, we have ego. Ego creates stuff for us, and that's something that everybody wants to remember. You want to make sure that you're grounded during this time because if you're not grounded, tourmaline will ground you. But if you're not grounded, you're going to find yourself having a lot of stuff coming at you, and you're not going to be able to distinguish what's real and what's not. So my recommendation is for you to first ground yourself and then use that selenite after you ground. Um, Crystal... If you take a bath with black tourmaline, it'll be really great for you for grounding in a matter of oh. one day. Oh, okay, my God, perfect. Awesome. Okay, great. I have the black tourmaline. I had one, and it broke. So I was like, oh, my God, I got to go back to the store and get another one. <laughs> yes, and you should bury that one. Yeah. I actually oh, did. Enough. I actually did. I went to a big park right by the water, and I said a little prayer, said what I need to say to Gaia, and then I buried it. Yes. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you for coming in, and, and good luck. Thank you good so luck. much, Raylene. Thank you. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. You're so Bye. welcome. Bye, hon. Have a good night. Oh, you'll, uh, you you'll hear me. You'll, you'll hear from me again. <laughs> and your you your do. web your your website is um, what is your website? Um, oh yeah. Angel. 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 Seven. Number seven dot com. Right. Okay. Great. I'll I'll make an appointment through there. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're hey. welcome, hon. See you later. All right. Take care. Have a good night. You too. Oh. You too. All right. We got. An, oh my God. Oh no, that's a different one. Six two six area code. Hey there. How are you doing? Hi. This is Elizabeth calling from Los Angeles. Hi, Raylene. Hi, Hi Eric. Hi, Elisa. How are you? Hey, sweetie, what you got for us? How are you? How is everyone doing? Good. We're doing wonderful. I'm I'm doing good. Um, so I had a little experience yesterday. Um, I was before I went to bed. I did some meditation with um my purple howlite howlite, and um I placed it on my third eye. And then when I was done meditating, I placed my um my crystal. I put it away. Then I went to sleep. And then I had this dream. Um, well, I don't know if it's a dream or, or what it was, but um, I saw myself as a child um, between, like, the ages of two and four. And then I started, like, to go back into, like, the 1920s, still a child. Um, so I thought, like, okay, maybe this is, like, a past regression. And I was trying to remember everything so that I could write it down when I woke up. Um, but then I became a young adult, and I was, like, in the Amazon in Peru, and then um, I saw an inter interdimensional being, and I wow. and I know this because they kept on telling me this that that's what I saw. Now what happens is that after I woke um in my dream, I said I was a little scared because I saw it move through a portal, and I saw its eyes. Um, they were pretty. Um, it looked like a human, 
but it was um, larger eyes, dark. Oh, and I said, at, fir- at first I was a little bit worried, and I said, and I blurted out, hey, I know who you are. Um, Eric's told me about you, so I wasn't scared. But I wasn't sure if it was as a result of me listening to um, the episode of The Missing 411 or if that was an actual occurrence that happened last night. Ooh, I was hoping no. Eric could kind of clarify for me. Yeah. You're saying that this is an overactive third eye. Some of what you were experiencing was taking you back to past, but some of it was being created by an overactive third eye. Um, okay, cool. He's telling you to balance it, and he says that you are safe. Um, he's talking about the energy that you see going through portals. He says that is very accurate. The energy that's going through this whirlpool in your mind, he's showing that you connecting to interdimensional beings. There's several cool. types that you connect with that are positive. They're not negative. So just know that you can trust them. Okay, cool. Because I told him, I said, I know you. Like, I know who you are, you know. And, yes. and then he, he went into the portal and he came back to kind of, like, reassure me that I wasn't, make, like, I knew, oh. to reassure oh. me of what I saw. Oh, that's nice. So yeah. I was like, okay. So, so wait, I who was it? Get clarification. I don't get it. Who was it? I, I don't know. It was, it was, um, it was, um, it looked like a man. It looked like somebody that would live among us. Oh, like, okay. Uh, like a being that lived among, like, he looks human, but right. he disappears. Like ah. whatever he wants. He has no oh. tangible body, but he can create a tangible body at the same time. These beings, they're, uh, I believe the proper name is a humanoid because they look very human, but their eyes are distinct. There's many different types of beings out there. Not all of them are positive, but the ones that you're engaging with are for the, the positivity of you. Thank God. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Until next thank- time. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye, you're everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. That's so cool. That's a lot of power there. All right, we got somebody <laughs> from the 787 area code. Hi there. How are you? Hello. Hi, hey. Lisa. Hi, Eric. Hey, who are we talking to? Hi. Dyla. Hi. How do you say we your name? To Dyla. Dyla. Hi, Dyla. D-A-Y-R-A. Yeah. All right, what you got for us, girl? Well, I have... Um, Actually, I have in my work, I use a black tourmaline. I have it for, for protection, and I carry a clear quartz. Is that is that good enough for me? Eric says hello to you and that he's with you quite often. He Aww. says that he helps to protect you, and he says that you're yeah. very, very much connected to him. He's answering your question. He says, yes, that is good for you. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, I love him. We speak all the time, and he thanks me, and, oh, I feel so blessed. I am. Wow. I love you, Eric, and I love you. a beautiful you. relationship. Yes. So you, guys have a a lover. Lover. you got a special relationship. That's cool. Did did they have another life together in some form? No, he's not showing another life. He's just showing being connected to the loving person that she is now and oh. helping her. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, but yes, those crystals are good for you. Those crystals are awesome. Um, he is showing you pink as well, so you want to use something for your heart. So like a rose quartz or a pink petalite, um, pink coonsite. Rose quartz is going to be the easiest for you to access, though. Um, so there's something going on in your heart center. You might have emotions that you're holding on to, um, some type of unsettling information that you may have received but there's something in your heart chakra that you want to remove. So have your, your rose quartz do it for you. So you I shall. Your, good. Let me ask you a real quick question. Awesome. You measure your, yes. your chakra, and this is for Eric or Raylene. If it's too big, what does that mean, as opposed to when it's too small? Overactive and underactive. Yeah, so what does it mean? So overactive is, let's say your solar plexus. I'll give you an example of the solar plexus. So your solar plexus is overactive. It's going to be too big. You're going to be too controlling of others. You're going to want things your way and no way. If it's underactive, you're going to let people walk all over you. You're not going to stand your ground. Um, So it's very over and under. Yeah, what about the 
for the event, and a lot of them had large heart chakras. Yes. Now, if you have a large heart chakra, you're overgiving. You're overgiving yourself. You're overgiving your time. You're overdoing something. Um, if your heart chakra is underactive, you likely have um, grief that's blocking it, or you're in a really nasty relationship that causes anger for you. Um, cool. So it it really depends on the chakra, what you're going to consist of. Like the sacral chakra, for instance, if your sacral chakra is overactive, you're going to have a problem with addiction. This could be substances. Ah. Um, this could be food. This could be relationships. You're addicted to something. So okay. you're not going to be able to stop with a certain behavior. If it's underactive for the sacral, you're going to not feel very motivated either. Motivation is going to be dead for you. Um, okay. Each chakra, it's different. Each chakra has a different play. All right, so I'm going to do a, probably a YouTube on measuring chakras for you guys maybe one time. All right, well, thank you, Donna, for You're calling awesome. in. We'll take the next caller. Well, and, thank uh, you. You and your yeah, boys, you'll be all blessing. You and your thank boys you. take care of each other. Okay. Definitely. Uh, definitely. Thank you. Sure. All right, got somebody from the 647 area code. Hello. Hi, Elise. Hi, Raylene and Eric. Hi. Hey. Hi. So my name is Renata, and I'm calling from Toronto, Canada. Oh, and um, I'm calling. I We've spoken before, Elise, about me trying to get pregnant, but and I've called a few oh, times. But today I'm, ask, today I'm asking about um, my job, my full-time employment. Uh, I have two jobs. My full-time employment, I've been there for 25 years since I was 16 years old. And I've been pretty much a family member to them, yeah. I've been like family. And this this past year, um, they've been treating me, my employers have been treating me really, really bad, like ostracizing me with the other staff, um, completely ignoring me, like treating me badly where it's affecting other parts of my life, probably me not even getting pregnant right now because it's very stressful and toxic. Mm. And I can't afford to leave. I need my job. Because you know I'm trying to print it and I have a plan. I just need to know maybe if I understood why what I did or what yeah. I didn't do, maybe I can kind of keep going on. And if you can give me some insight. Well, yeah, yeah it could everything. be maybe it's you're ever saying you're you need to be nudged out of there and onto bigger, better things. But I don't know. Let's let the master say because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about half the time. That's yeah. exactly what Eric is saying. He's saying that it's time for you to have a shift. He's telling you not to worry and not to panic about this, but you're being guided to look for a different position, um, oh, different line of work. Oh, yeah. You're going to be okay is what he's telling me. He says that things are going to be okay. You didn't do something. They're not appreciating your work, and you need to go somewhere else that's going to appreciate your line of work. The quality that you bring to the table is something that a lot of people look for. He says that you are overqualified for what you're doing now. Um, they do think of you as family, and they appreciate you for the most part, but there's a lot of changes within the company that's taking change, that's taking place. Uh, you're being guided to move, move directions. You're not going to be fired. You're going to leave on your own terms. The stress that work is causing you, you're going to start to see that this isn't benefiting me. It's time for me to move forward. And so what okay. what. What is she going to, what kind of uh, other career should she possibly look into? Computers. You will be working on computers. In some okay. way, remote. I, I, kind of, I kind of do that now with the computers and bookkeeping and, and all that. But um, so I just, I have the feeling that they're trying to, they don't want to pull the trigger and get rid of me, but are they pushing me out? Like trying to push no. me to the point of like, I'm done. No, no, it's not something okay. that they're actively trying to do. No, the it's company probably is their changing. guides. Yeah, maybe their guides are nudging them, and your guides are, you know, they're working in sync so that you move forward to another path in your life, a better path. You know, the con, the spiritual contract maybe is done with them, and you need to maybe right. move on. Yes. Okay. Do you, do, you have a, do you have a time frame from when I could can move on? Because I can't afford it right now. Uh, I, my plan was to get pregnant, go on maternity leave, and then after that, not go back. Like, look elsewhere. 
So I see you leaving before your pregnancy. Um, before you give birth, I do see you end up getting pregnant, but I don't see you sticking there until your maternity leave. Um, he's telling you that you have the ability to look for something now, not to put off your long-term happiness, your goals. Start looking for something right now. There will be there's a job that is going to present itself to you. It's along the lines of what you're doing now. It's still computer work oriented or desk job, but uh, a little bit a little bit of a difference from what you're in right now. But I different don't see work you having struggling paperwork wise, okay. like the the type of work that she would manage. It's going to ah. be a different type of work that she manages. Um, the way that the billing is done or the accounting stuff is done, it's going to be done differently. So I don't see you. I don't see you struggling with it. I see you catching on. So just know that you're qualified for whatever comes to you, and that you deserve it. What about okay. project management and using Gantt charts? I don't know why that came to me, but whatever. Yes. Okay. Gantt. Yes. And okay, so it's nothing. It's not a personal thing against me from them. No, it's not. Nothing towards you. Okay. Look at the project. I mean, yeah, look at the project management because you can get certain certifications, and a lot of times right. companies will pay for that. But you know, you use right. Gantt charts and it's, you know, computer oriented. It's kind of cool. Uh, maybe okay. it was channel. Maybe I'm just wrong. But anyway, just listen to your heart when you consider these things. Okay. Because you can make a okay. lot of money. But it's, it's right. good. You know, and Erica Wright. I don't think it's a really good idea for you to be in a stressful situation while you are carrying a baby. It's, it's never really good to have those stress hormones just, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Like, well, that just leads me to one last question about this uh, relation. Um, is it, is this, is this feeling that they're giving me all day and the stress, is that preventing, is that why I've had the miscarriage and I'm not getting pregnant? Yes, because you're under stress and I'm glad that you brought that up. Ooh, um, it yeah. does, it prevents a block when you're stuck in one part of your life and you haven't moved forward you're not showing the universe that you're ready for that next step. Um, so do again, you, I don't see you working while you're pregnant. Do you think she will okay. get pregnant uh, right away when she is away from that job and in another? Or yeah, does she need pregnancy. to do something else? Is there something no, else? I see, I see pregnancy happening in 2020. I would have to say that this is going to happen about June or July of 2020. You're going to have another job but the job doesn't the job that you're going to be happy in is going to be after you give birth i want to go with 20 the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021 um but you're going to be fine financially you're not going to have a struggle so i don't want you to think that things are going to be challenging for you you want to miss this next step to make this movement um he's telling me that there's another job that happens for you while you're pregnant um, before you even get pregnant, there's going to be something that you find that's going to cover your maintenance, kind of cover the overhead of what you're needing. Really All right, good. You into something new. All right. Well, okay. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to get one last call in here, people. Good luck, darling. Keep us posted. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Bye. Wow. So many years in the same company, and this happens. It's weird. Um. Well, no, it's not. unfortunate. God. Okay, I'm uh, talking to somebody from the 516 area code. Hey there. Hi, Elisa. Hi, Hi. Eileen. Hey, Eric. I love you. What? Oh, um, I, we love you yes. too. Yes. Um, I have one. I have two questions for Eric. One is for my niece, Irene. She just diagnosed with diabetic type one. I don't know if she can channel her higher self to know if she's going to be okay, what's going to happen, and things like that. So she that's the first question. Be, she is going to be okay. Um, I'm looking at her kidneys. This is a past life energy that she's carrying with her. It's connecting to her parents right now. How old is your niece? Um, seven. She's very young. Oh, wow. So yeah, it, it is. is connecting to her parents, the energy that she's bringing forth. It's mm-hmm. past life energy. She's going to be fine. Her niece mm-hmm. is not going to pass away from this disease. I do see that she balances it very well with life. She's, oh, yes. 
She is. She's very, but yes. my sister wanted, oh, yes, she's doing so well, but it's just recently, and my sister, like, is very depressed about it, and she wanted to go away, and she giving her, like, natural stuff, too, and things like that. So she's bounced, like, so well. You said it well, Rylan. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes. You guys. You, She's you going to be okay. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Um, One more question Um, for Eric. I don't know about my career. I want to move on. Eric knows what's next for me to do. He knows, but I don't know if, if, it's, of, if it's a fear. That's why I'm not moving on. And where I'm at, I mean, to me, it's like chaos. I feel like I, I don't belong there. For some reason, I feel like I don't belong there. And I'm getting frustrated. But at the same time, living to the other one that I wanted to do, I don't know, money-wise, how it's going to yeah, be. Yeah. yeah, that's always tough. But, uh, you know, I see you doing something that's involving caretaking and this really isn't so much for a career. You're going to be doing some form of caretaking, and I know you're talking about career right now, but is there a family member that you're having to care for or a relative that you're having to care for? Um, I take care of people before, and, yeah, I have a family member I do, but I have my career too. I have a career, so I'm working, you know, on my career now, so. You're going to be doing something that's caretaking related for your career. Where you're at right now, you're not going to stick with it. But you're not going to be sticking in career very long. There's going to be some care that's coming up for you or a family member that you're going to have to be doing care for. Um, I see finances balancing out for you, so don't worry about that aspect of things. But you're going to have pretty big changes around your work life and your, your home life. Oh, home life, is it going to be scary or... I don't no. know. He says that it's not going to be scary. It's going to be you helping family members. Because um, mm-hmm. it's going to be rewarding. Because since my my daughter's death, I don't think I can't take you know More pain. too much stress no. anymore. Like in a way. And by the way, yeah. I want Eric to tell her that I I said I love her every day and and I miss her, my daughter, Joanna. Oh. Yeah. You're celebrating something. There's either a birthday or an anniversary of some sort coming up. Uh, this might be a death date of hers. What's coming up? She's acknowledging some type of day. It might even be your birthday. Is there a birthday for you or an event that you're celebrating? No, my birthday is not anytime soon. For her, I did. It was back like in July. She would have turned a year old. But I miss yeah. her every day. Sometimes I feel like... Um, that's why I was thinking to us, Eric, sometimes uh, I don't see no point for me of being here. I like, I'm, it's like I'm functioning, but it's like on autopilot, you know, I'm putting a mask on. But I, I feel like I don't have anything to look forward to. Well, a message, let's get a message from your daughter. And then I need to close out the show because I don't want to run into the next one. I'll get in trouble. So, uh, yeah. Your daughter? Yeah. Yeah, your daughter know. wants you to know that she's okay. She is very young, um, almost like a infant stage. Yeah. Now, she's also letting me know that she wasn't in pain when she transitioned. There's something going on with her lungs or with her heart when she died, um, and she's letting you know that that was okay on her end with leaving. Yeah, um, because- she's going back to you celebrating. I'm sorry, hang on. She's going back to you celebrating something. So I don't know what it is I, that you're celebrating. I'm it's going like, to or I did. You're going to. It's not something that you've done. I'm going to. I don't know any celebration anytime when soon. Did your daughter, when was her death date? Um, That was like on August the 25th. And so that, mm-hmm. that right there could be an anniversary date that she was acknowledging. Because our birthday, birthday, not, birthday was not. in July. I, I did go to the grave. Uh, my husband did. I didn't go the same day, but I did wish her a happy birthday. I did channel her. What do you yeah, think about so it? That's what she's trying it's to probably, acknowledge. Yeah, it's probably something coming up. It could be a relative, you know, anniversary of this, that, and the other thing. You never know. I mean, but anyway, I got to close the show, people. Thank you okay. so Thank much. You so much. Thank you so much, Eliza. Thank you so much. I love you. Thanks for all you do. Thanks, Raylene. And I love you, Eric. I don't know if it's Eric is my guy. One more question. 
he said one of my angel guide um his uh, name is Muriel. Is was him? I don't know. I just want to make sure. Yes. Oh my all God, right. that was him. Okay, all right. Thank you, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, thank You're you welcome. very much. Bye. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. You guys get in touch Bye. with Raylene. See how incredible she is. You need to book a session before you booked up for a decade. All right, and that is Angel Medium, the number seven, the numeral seven dot com. Check her out. And thank you, Eric. I love you. Thank you, Raylene. I love you, and all you guys who are listening. You're welcome. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, Eric says thank you, and he says I love you all very much, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Elisa. This was a pleasure, and have a good one, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.